In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. On this Pentecost Sunday, I'd hoped to give a sermon um, that was lighthearted and filled with the joy of the birthday of the church. And as I reflect on the news stories of this week, particularly another black man killed at the hands of a white police officer, it felt impossible to take on a lighthearted tone. And so here I am bringing you still the good news of Christ, that we have a gift in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's gift isn't one wrapped in a bright, colorful paper with a bow around it. The Holy Spirit's gift is one that calls us to action. Just like those first disciples who had been praying in the upper room after the ascension of Jesus into heaven, discerning what was next for them and what God would be calling them to do, how on earth they would spread the message of God's love to all people in, with no regard for race or creed or color. And the way they were able to do that is that when the Holy Spirit descended upon them, the Holy Spirit gave them new language. The Holy Spirit gave them the ability to speak to those they had not been able to reach before. It says that when the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. And then they didn't go sit on that newfound gift that they had, but immediately went out and were able to share the message of God's power to all of those from every nation who were living in Jerusalem. The language barrier that we face today isn't across nationalities. It's across contexts within this country. The language that we use are the same words, the same dialect, but we can't seem to find the same meaning. The words we say have become flashpoints of polarization. The words that we say have become politicized. The words that we say or that we hear have become ways that we label one another. Not just around the issue of race and the violence that continues to be perpetrated against our black and brown brothers and sisters, but guns, health care, poverty, immigration, countless things. Our language is divided and we have barriers that we've put up between us. This country is deeply, deeply divided and it's very concerning to me. In the midst of the COVID-19 virus, there was a hint of a silver lining that perhaps with a shared enemy of this virus, we might become united like we as a country have been in the past. And yet, even our response to the virus has become political and difficult to navigate. Wearing a mask has somehow become a statement as opposed to an act of loving our neighbor. This slices both ways. I wanna make sure that that's very clear. We're all gonna to have to do work if we're gonna to get to a place where the language divide is overcome. What doesn't slice both ways is 
the disadvantage that not only the virus, but our culture has on those in our communities that are people of color. That is universal. And until we are able to have that conversation honestly and do the work wholeheartedly to address that, we are not living into God's dream. We are not living into what it is to be a follower of Jesus. And so what I'm calling on each of us to do this Pentecost Sunday, in light of the descending of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit whose first act was to help those disciples break down the language barriers that divide, is for us to discern who in our lives we have language barriers with, and then to be willing to be led by the Holy Spirit to move into the acts of breaking down those barriers. With each conversation, with each interaction, instead of avoiding them, walk into them gently, deliberately, prayerfully. Jesus walks alongside us and we will walk alongside each other. We won't get it right all the time. And the first person we do this with shouldn't be the hardest name on our list. Start with the easiest name, but start. The work is essential. It's what the Holy Spirit is here for, to continue to teach us, to continue to help us discern, and to keep us empowered, infused with the energy that we need so that the dream of God that we can all be united, that we can see and respect the dignity of each person depends on it. Like the disciples, don't wait. Go now. Begin the work now. It doesn't have to be face to face. It can be in whatever way you communicate with those you love and those you interact with. This is what the birthday of the church is all about. It's about starting a new thing. Start it today. Amen.